Hello there. In case you haven't met, my name is Dr. Kuria, and I'm a practicing veterinarian in the Florida, United States. If you have met me on my YouTube channel, my pet checkup channel, you may have watched some of my videos, mostly about pet health. Today, I'm going to discuss how to choose the right food for your dog or cat. Sorry about that. That's my name there. And for the last 10 years, the most frequent question I have been asked by my clients is what is the best food for my dog or cat? What is the best food for my dog or cat? So over the last five years, I have posted the list of good food and the list of bad food next to each other. So each time a client asks me what is the best food for my dog or cat, I'll give them the list of the good food. What are the challenges of choosing food? If you go to a pet store and ask the pet owner to tell you, to tell you what is the best food for your dog or cat, most likely he won't give you a straight answer. Why? Because he or she like you doesn't know what is the right food or food for a cat or dog. All he knows is the popular food, popular brands that people normally buy from his shop. So he's likely to tell you people are buying this food for the dog, people are buying this one for the cat. But he has not read the ingredients on the, on the bags or not. The same thing when you go online, the challenges of a uh, Choosing a good food is the number of varieties that are there. Thousands and thousands of varieties of dog and cat food with nobody to guide you. Yeah? And then what happens online is that among all those varieties of food, you find good food and bad food that displayed, why it displayed each displayed next to each other, all right? Bad food, good food are all displayed because the manufacturers of a bad or poor quality pet food, they normally spend a lot of time uh, advertising their food. So you find them just, you know, displayed next to pretty good food. And most of the time, their food is, you know, very packaged in very appealing uh, packages. So most likely you are going to tell yourself, if the food, you know, the package looks so good, the food should look for two, should look, should be good too. But that is not true. Most of the time, you buy the food, and if I, you just go by the package, most likely, you are likely to buy extremely bad food. So, the problem with the purchasing food, there are so many varieties of food, and somebody needs to guide you to buy the right food. As I said, when you're buying online, overzealous and misreading advertisements make it very difficult for someone to chop the right food. Why? Because they're spending too much and most of the advertisements are very misreading. What is an ideal dog or cat food? An ideal dog or cat food to, to dismay and taste good, be easily chewable and contain all the nutrients that a dog or cat needs. Dogs and cats are carnivorous whose diet is primarily meat. Meat is dieted to 45% protein and the rest is water. The digestive system of dogs and cats is built to primarily digest meat. Not the grains, just by, by, you know, just meat. Why are proteins more important than carbohydrates and fat in dogs and cats diet? Dogs and cats need huge amounts of protein to constantly repair and maintain their external and internal body organs. My muscles, my internal organs, all these are muscles. Skeletal muscles on the outside, involuntary muscles in the abdomen. And all of them are made up of protein. So each time you are injured, you need the protein to repair the injury where you are injured. The same with the thing with the dogs. When they get injured, they need the proteins to repair 
the idea, the tissue of the body. The other thing is skin, you know, stress, the body cells also don't live forever. They get aged and they have to be replaced, right? So, either it is you or your cat or dog or me, I need a lot of proteins in my food to be able to repair in the, the, the muscles or tissues and also to maintain the integrity of my health. Meat as food is the only nutrient that a dog or cat can live on without needing the other two. Right? Meat is adequate for the cat or dog to thrive on without carbohydrates or sugar. Why is this? Dogs like you and me can turn proteins into sugar to meet their daily energy needs. Dogs and cats like you and me can also turn proteins into sugar and then turn sugar into fat. If the dog doesn't need all the energy he has, all the sugar he needs in the body, it will turn it into fat and then store that fat in the liver, in the abdomen, under the skin, eye between muscles. All right? Any unused sugar is turned into fat. However, dogs like you and me are unable to turn carbohydrates and fat into proteins because fats and carbohydrates don't have the mineral nitrogen which is required in the synthesis of proteins. Who is AFCO? AFCO stands for the Association of American Feed Control of Issues. This is a non-governmental and non-profit organization that established standards, pet food nutritional standards for the production of complete and balanced pet food. Manufacturers use these guidelines in their formulation of pet food. AFCO also establishes standards, definitions and policies that state agencies use to regulate pet food manufacturers and distributors in their states. AFCO also closely works with the Food and Drug Administration in its provision of services to the pet food industry. How do you differentiate the good from all the bad food in the market? Read the nutritional facts provided on the printed label on the bar or can of food before buying. But just buying the food is not the right, uh, is not the right exercise per buying app exercise that you do. You need to feed your dog or cat with the food and let the cat or dog determine if that food is good. You need to let your dog or cat test the food. Each time you offer your dog or cat new food, watch their reaction. Watch how they react to the new food. If the dog or cat sniffs the food and walks away, that food is likely contaminated. If the dog or cat eats the food reluctantly, most likely the food does not taste good, it's too hard to chew or contaminate it. If your dog or cat eats new food, then starts vomiting, having diarrhea, or scratching the face, all those are signs of food poisoning or food allergy. Uh, later I'll do a video on the food poisoning and allergies. Caution, beware. Each time you buy new food, a new brand of food, or you just replace the old food or the old bread you have been using for years, always be aware there could be contamination. Manufactured food goes through very many processes and chances of contamination are always there. All pet food producers follow established standards in manufacturing complete and balanced dog and cat food. That's a good reason for you not to read the nutritional facts as if you are sitting for an examination. All good pet food contain adequate vitamins and minerals and they do not need any supplementation. So how do you differentiate the good from the bad? Good protein content. Check the good protein content. In actual fact, that's the only thing you need to read on the nutritional facts. That's all you need to look for. Look for the good protein content. Good protein content. Nothing else. Forget all, other, all the other details about ingredients, the other guaranteed uh, ingredients. You don't need that. All you need to know is the good protein content. That's all you need to read. 
What is crude protein? Crude protein is the total amount of protein in a bag or can of food regardless of its source. Whether it's from beef, lamb, fish, venison, or if it is of plant origin like beans, peas, or grains, crude protein is just crude protein. It, 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 it defines everything in the food. Crude protein on a printed label on a bag of food is reported in percent as a percentage. What minimum could protein content does Africa recommend for dogs and cats? For dogs, Africa recommend 18% for maintenance of the body and 22.5% for growing and reproducing dogs. For cats, Africa recommends 26% crude protein and that percent for growing and reproducing cats. The crude protein content in pet foods on the market range all the way from 18 to 38%. I consider any food within with a crude protein content above 30 percent to be of high quality. Any food on the market with a protein content over 30 percent is good quality food. Tells me the manufacturers is using more animal protein than plant protein. The manufacturer is using more animal protein than plant protein. It also tells me that you know, the manufacturer is very committed to producing extremely high quality pet food. How to read a nutritional facts label? This is how a nutritional label is formatted. Any food you buy, you have a label like this one. This is from a blue Bavaro uh, dog food. All right? On the first section, they list all the ingredients in the food, all right? This particular food had over 60 ingredients, all right? But you don't need to read all of that. I have read this one for you, all right? You don't need to read that. I don't even have to read this one. But if you just want to read the, if you just want to read the nutrition of facts, look for the crude protein. See, this food has that 4%. If it has a bar, it has crude fat too, and it has crude fiber, 15 and 6, but you don't have to read that also. As I mentioned earlier, dogs and cats and you and me are able to generate energy from uh, meat, from protein, and turn it into sugar. So, and then from sugar to fat. Meat does not have a lot of fiber, almost none fiber. Meat does not have a lot of fiber. So you can see here, I don't agree, I just disregard that. The moisture content depends, uh, is normally most of the food have around 10%. The moisture, if the moisture content is higher than 10, there are chances of storage the food because uh, the moisture will attract mold or yeast, all right? The calcium is 1.4, the phosphorus is 0 0.9, but you don't need to be too, to, to worry about that. All food will contain a minimum of those. This food here had the other ingredients, omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acid that has glucosamine. If you would see any, any ingredients here with a star, you can say they say the ingredient is not required as essential nutrient by the AFCO, right? So you don't have to worry about that. Those are the, what I call extras, all right? So you have uh, first section, second section, the last section of the nutrition statement just says, you, just says that if you take this food to a laboratory and they analyze it, they are going to find at least that 4% uh, crude protein. And uh, it also says the food is made according to AFCO standards. The same with, with the wet food, you have the ingredients on top there, you have guaranteed analysis, you have a you know, AFCO statement there. The same thing with the dry food, all right? For wet food, most of it is just water. You can see here, the moisture content of this food is 82%. So I don't recommend feeding just uh, wet food to dogs and cats. You will not be able to get adequate nutrients or a lot of protein from there. You need to mix the food with the dry food. All right, you mix wet food and dry food. How I picked my top 10 pet food brands. Step one. And I went to a dogfoodadvisor.com, 
which is a website that just uh, features different types of food that they recommend what they think is uh, what they have determined is good food. So I went to Dog Food Advisor and picked 24 best pet, food, pet foods. And then, next step, I purchased a bar and a can of food of each brand. And this is what I purchased from Amazon that I recommended by Dog Food Advisor, right? I got the names from Dog Food Advisor. I went to Amazon and I bought a bar of each. After patching the food, I went uh, on the nutrition label and I checked the nutrients or rather the crude protein on each one of uh, in each one of these bars. Right? I checked the crude protein. After checking the crude protein, I eliminated 14 bags of these because they had the crude protein of less than 30 percent. Right? That a percent, they had less than percent, 14 bags, I just eliminated that. And then I was left with uh, 10 bags. The next step, I took a bag of, uh, I took a bag of, uh, of each, I, took, uh, I opened each one of those bags, picked a few pellets, and just chewed it. But before chewing, I smelled the aroma. I was looking for, you know, so you got some pleasant smell coming from inside there. So I smelled the aroma, and then after that I tasted to find if the food has some lingering sweet taste. And then I tested how palatable they are. All right, the food could be good quality, but if the food is not palatable or is too hard to chew, the dog will not be able to eat all of it. It will be selective. So I normally Always add a little bit of water in the dog food to, to moisten it a little bit, makes it easy to chew, and it stops the, you know, the, the, the food from traumatizing the gums. All right? If the food is too hard, the dog is eating that dry food for a long period of time, you get what we call gingival hyperplasia, or just in, in increases the, the cells around the gums. They become bigger and bigger because the dog is eating the, a lot of, of that food. All right, and the food is traumatizing the gums. So I always recommend moisten the food a little bit. Makes it is to chew and the stomach you like it. If the dog doesn't chew the food, the stomach is going to reject it and throw it out as vomiting. After testing, uh, smearing and testing and uh, ch checking the palatability, I graded all those 10 uh, different brand of, uh, of foods from 1 to 10. All right, these are my findings of smearing, testing, and checking portability, checking the crude protein. I gave them a grade uh, you know, uh, uh, up to 10, and then I added all of those up to 30, 30, uh, 30 points. What you need to know here, as I talked about the crude protein, is just to check the crude protein. You notice among these 10 uh, brands here, Brew Bavaro, Nature's Logic, Instinct, Open Farm, Origin, Ghost Solutions, Merrick, Wellness Core, Neuro, and Candide, they all have over that percent crude protein. Origin had the highest, what was 38%. All right? Instinct, what I want to note, to note from Instinct, had that a six, but the only difference you find is most of all of, the, all of these uh, foods had crude, uh, crude fat of about 15%, 15 to 16. But Instinct had 29. That means that it has a lot of crude fat in it. All right? And the crude fat makes the food pellets very soft, right? You can see the moisture or water content is very low, which would make the food very dry to chew, but they are very soft because they have added a lot of fat in it. Okay? The other thing is the extras. The extras, as I said, are ingredients that uh, AFCO does not mandate the, pet, the food producers to add, but the, uh, 
The producers or the manufacturers have added all of those ingredients. They are mainly probiotics or prebiotics and the joint supplements. All right. So among the ten, it's only instinct doesn't have any extras. Right? But all the other food have some probiotics or prebiotics or joint supplements, which is chondroitin, salvate, and glucosamine. So when you are reading, buying food, any food with that percent good protein is good food that you'll be able to buy. So I have uh, noted here about the extras. These are just prebiotics, probiotics, and joint supplements like glucosamine and the chondroitin sulfate. As I said, wet food is mainly water, over 80%. So as I said earlier, don't feed your dog wet food only, just water, all right? Just add the, the wet food to dry food. When you feed your dog and taste everything, everything you have offered, that's an indication that it needs more food. If it leaves some food in the container, that indicates it has eaten enough. What did I do with my top 10 food, my, my top 10 food, my top 10 pet foods next. I created a pet food global website, a website that features pet food from the top 10 pet food brands only. What did I do next? I went ahead and made a menu made up all the 10 pet food brands from Blue Bavaro, Instinct, Nature's Logic, Open Farm, Gozo Riches, Merit, Wellness, Wellness Call, Neuro Pet Food and Canada. After that, I grouped those uh, pet foods into 26 categories. Right? I classified all those foods into 26 food categories. You have food for the small dogs, those are like the Chihuahuas, the Pomeranians, the Poodles, the Maltese, the Kitsu, whose weight is normally between 5 and 25. And then there are standard breeds like uh, Golden Retrievers, the Chapeis, the Golden Doodles, uh, the Beagles, all those most weigh between 26 and 60 pounds. All right? We call them standard breed dogs. And then you have large dogs like uh, Rottweilers, like Bull Mastiffs, like the Great Dane. Those are large breed dogs whose weight is normally over 60, 61 pounds. So the food is classified into all those small breeds, standard breed, and large breed. For cats, I had kitten food, dry and wet, and then you have adult cat, dry and wet food, and then you have senior cat, dry and wet food. Then you have separated dog treats and cat treats. So a total of 26 classifications of dog and cat food. All right. So when you are buying the food, you want to check whether your dog is small breed, standard breed, or right breed, or is it just a cat. Step four, I created a chopping experience like no other. I call it three touch chopping, if chopping on mobile on a mobile device, or three clicks chopping if chopping on desktop. What does three touch chopping involve? If you go to a search bar to search, to search for food and you just tap the search, uh, the search box, you find a Uh, a drop down menu that has got 10 different brands of pet food, right? 10 different uh, pet food brands, the one I've just talked about, right? If you click in one of those uh, brands, and it doesn't matter which one you click, right? All those are dog, good dog food. And all these are the food that contains over 30% good protein. If you tapped on any, on the, on any one of those, then it will take us to the sub menu, the one with the 26 different categories of food. And then you just choose what food you like. If you have small dog, you want adult food, you just get small breed dogs, adult food, adult dry food, or adult wet food. And then it will take you to the, all those categories of, or it will take you to that category of small breed dogs, dry food. And then if you tap, you can browse through all the, all the food in that category, and then you just tap the food that you want, and that tapping is arranged to Amazon. And then from Amazon, you just buy the food. You don't have to go and browse the food again when you go to Amazon. It has already been pre-selected for you, all right? 
once you click the Amazon link, the food you will go to that food is the pre-selected food. If it was from Brew Bavaro or Origin or Wellness, it just tells you it's food with over that percent good protein and it is good food. About three pits chopping, if you go, if you are using a desktop, if you go to the sidebar on the website, you find all those ten uh, food, pet food brands. Again, you just click the brand that you want, and then it will give you a drop-down menu with the 26 different food categories. Yes? And then you just go to the category that you like, you click on it, and that will take you to all the food within that category. And then you can browse it, and then you click the food that you want. And once again, that will take you to Amazon. And from Amazon, you know the food is good already. So all you need to do is buy it. You don't have to go there and compare with other brands or compare with the same brands that I have, uh, I have analyzed here. That food is good. If you want to change, you just go back to the menu and then you go to, to this menu and then you click another different brand. It's all up to you. But then the food you buy from Pet Food Global is pre-selected food. It's pre-selected food with good, high quality, good protein. So what are you waiting for? Come and chop pet food the easy way. Come and chop pet food the easy way. The pet food global way. The three taps way. The three tricks way. And that's the end of this video. I know now you know how to select the food. If you want to go to pet food global, you are welcome. If you want to go and, uh, to the pet store, if you want to go to uh, Amazon or Petco or whatever, you need to look for good protein. But you need to have a lot of time to be able to check different types of foods to be able to find the one with over 30 percent good protein. But if you go to pet, uh, to pet food global, everything, all the food there is pre-selected. You don't have to select it. All you have to do is click or tap. Thank you for watching and see you at Pet Food Global.